Welcome to labmis.com and a lab video series on Cisco ACI 6.0. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of ACI videos, you can visit our website under the data center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In an ACI deployment, the first thing that you need to do is to provision a fabric, and that is including getting all the components to discover and communicate with one another so they are ready for further configuration. This is a very important step because what you do here may affect scalability of the fabric in the future, so you want to make sure that it is done correctly, and that is what we are going to do in this video. To start doing the fabric provisioning, there are some prerequisites. First, you need to have all of the hardwares that you need powered on, ready to go. You need at least one APIC server for production. The minimum of three APIC is required for redundancy. You definitely want to review the fabric sizing guide to make sure that you have enough number of the APIC server based on the number of switches that you have for the network. So let me show you that real quick right here. Here is the scalability guide for the version that we have in our labs 601. And if you look down the document, you can see that for a three APIC server deployment, you can have up to 85 leaf switches, six pots, a thousand tenants, and a thousand VRFs. And you can see the scalability number goes up as you add more APIC nodes, four, five, and six, and even seven. And there are more information in this document, so make sure that you review this document thoroughly. And put that away. Now, in addition to the APIC, that you need to have at least one leaf and one spine switches, which makes sense. We talked about in the last video, in ACI fabric is made up of leaf and spine switches, so you at least need one of each. Cabling is also completed per discussion in the last video between the spine and the leaf, and you can see the cabling diagram right here as well for the APIC. This is based on third generation APIC. If you have a different generation, then the cabling or the port assignment might look a little different. So make sure to look up the respective installation guide before the Gen 3. This is what we're looking at. Port number two, which is the pair of port that would be for LAN management. This is how you will be accessing the APIC web interface. There are two ports because they fail over of one another. So you want to connect that to some kind of out of band switch. So that way, if you lose your fabric connectivity, you don't lose access to the APEC and do home them to two different physical switches if possible, again, for redundancy. Port number four is for the CAMC out of band management. So that should go to the out of band switch as well. Port number five is a zero port. If you need to gain zero access to the server and then port number nine, which will be on the network adapter card. I think for the third gen, you can only use either the first pair or the second pair. The first pair meaning port number one and two, that should go to leaf number one. And then port number three and four, again, you only need to use one of the two ports and that will go to leaf number two. Okay, so don't just connect port one and two, do you home that to the leaf? At minimum, use the port number one and three. Traditionally, APIC is always directly connected to the leaf as how we show it in this diagram. Starting version 5.2, just FYI, you can actually have an APIC cluster located across a layer three network. The setup is more involved and there's also a bunch of limitations. So unless you have a good reason to do that, I would say keep APIC locally attached to the leaf. Now you need to make sure that LLDP is disabled on the APIC. Right? Otherwise the fabric discovery will fail because it relies on the LLDP. And I guess I need to clarify that this is LLDP as configured on the CAMC, because I believe if you enable that, it's going to hijack the LLDP traffic, and then it's going to break LLDP for the APEC to communicate with the leaf. But if it's a brand new appliance you just get, that should be all taken care of for you. And then lastly, you have this out-of-band management network to access everything. 